If you've been following me for a while, you probably recognize this piece. I have been working on it for a couple of years in the background. Uh, whenever I got a moment between commissions and videos, anytime I taught myself a new technique or a new method, I would try and practice it until I got to a point where I was uh, comfortable and happy with, uh, with my work, and then I would apply those methods to this piece. So when I uh, learned filigree, or when I learned rope, or crosses, or anything at all, cloth, um, I would apply it to this piece. This was going to be my, my main uh, piece in my own army that will probably never come together. And it is bittersweet that I am now selling it off, but it is uh, nice to know that it is going to um, a, a uh, very deserving customer, someone who has been supporting me for a long time. So I am happy to, to send it off to him. But let's take a, let's take a look at it. So this was a uh, Gravis Captain to start off. The Gravis Captain that uh, nobody really likes. Um, the pose is, it's bad. I was gifted this, uh, this piece, or rather this miniature, by, uh, by a friend who didn't really like it or have need for it. And I decided to see what I could do with it. So the first thing I did was I rebuilt the leg and the hip. Can't really see it under here. Maybe I can find a picture of it uh, before I added these pieces. But this whole back calf area, or rather thigh, excuse me, um, and crotch and everything was uh, rebuilt and repositioned. His leg was repositioned so that he would be standing up on this rubble. After that, the uh, loincloth was added next, and then the, uh, the top half of the tabard. This is a complex method. Rather, you put a substructure down first and then you sculpt these folds on top. I have a video both for uh, joint uh, fixing and for complex cloth for those that are interested. And after that I uh, spent about a year and a half trying to decide what I was going to do with the arms. Whether it was going to be a flaming sword, whether it was going to be a two-handed grip on a, on a big, big weapon or whatever it was going to be. And I finally decided that I would like to do something with these bolters that uh, that came out with uh, the new Primaris release, or maybe not new, but a while ago. I just thought they were very cool, and so I wanted him to have a bolter. So I gave him a bolter with uh, a reposition of the arm, to cut the uh, top half of the arm and reposition it, rebuild his shoulder. And then I made sure to cut a hole here, a viewing port for his optic. And we also did a little bit of zoom in here. We did a little bit of uh, crowning work here on that port, so it's a little bit cleaner. We also did the same thing for the muzzle of the bolter, so it's got a nice crown on the muzzle, clean barrel all the way through. We have a video on how to do that as well. That process. Once this arm was done. Um, I started adding all of the details, all the sculpting. This kind of checker pattern, or uh, kind of maybe a castle top kind of pattern here, I started with. And uh, did an embossed banner here. I have a tutorial for those as well as the skull. The cross here was sculpted separately and transplanted, and then some filigree added. We did some checkers on the side here as well as another, another cross. The uh, scope here was meant to kind of copy a ACOG TA-31 with a flash, flash hider um, or reflection hider on the uh, front lens. Not that a TA-31 would have any sort of purpose on a weapon like this, but just uh, wanted a recognizable sort of scope. Removed the Picatinny rails here and custom built a, a mount for it. And then I did just a uh, stylized little detail here on the uh, cuff, the forearm here, with the X, or oh, the cross sculpted in place, filigree on the shoulder, some more checkering, and then an additional plate that I'm hoping the uh, owner, once he paints it, maybe he'll do some, uh, maybe he'll do some sort of freehand work or something, that would be cool. And we have some spikes coming out the top. 
this is not glued in so that he can easily access those areas as he needs to for painting. The arm is actually an arm from Adjudicator from uh, Age of Sigmar so that you get that cool elbow pad here and it also had a, a good angle. I didn't have to do a whole lot more to rebuild the shoulder. Some, but not a whole lot. So the angle was really nice. And then I cut right right uh, into the forearm and I gap filled this with some UV resin so that it came out really smooth and clean. I have a video about that as well. Added some stylized panels to this fist. This fist is from the Black Templars upgrade kit, which I trimmed and then added some power cables um, after it was all in position. The filigree skulls and all this detail here is also in tutorials if you're wanting to know how to do these. They're just added throughout, throughout the piece. Just details here. The uh, rope. Tried to uh, do the rope underneath this, this uh, medallion here, across the chest, underneath into this chest detail here, this cross, and then it goes underneath and dangles out. Get it nice and focused for you guys. There you go. This, uh, these purity seals come out from underneath the chest medallions as well, under the chain belt, and off to either side. There, and comes out under here, underneath the hip plate right there where the hip plate covers it. Another purity seal there accompanying that. And then lastly there was another decorative rope that came out here and then dangled down the leg where the front leg, um, once it was put up here, would shove that rope to the side. So I kind of want to make that look dynamic like the leg was impinging upon the rope and uh, positioning it so that it looked like it was reacting to his actual movement and the lantern was uh, glued in place. Now the cape was left pretty simple because I'm hoping that the uh, owner will do something with all this smooth open area. This was done in one piece, in one one go, with uh, green put, so green, green uh, stuff mixed with milliput. The reason for that is that it uh, cures very rigid and it also blends very smoothly. So this was put on and then the, the folds and details were sculpted on top. And I'm hoping that he's able to do some freehand there. I think that would look great. So this is going to count as sort of a uh, maybe a custom piece of uh, Terminator armor. It's going to kind of be its own relic armor. So there you go. Hope that was interesting for you guys. I am sad to see it go, but happy to see it go to somebody that deserves it. Thanks so much, guys. If you'd like to learn to sculpt like this, check me out at patreon.com slash lastlightcreative, where you can see tutorials on how to do all of this sort of thing, as well as access to Discord, where you will find a group of guys that uh, are like-minded, that uh, share their projects, and that answer questions if you have them, you're welcome to join us there as well. Thanks so much.